Lucía from La Villa Culinary Vacations and I'm here with Alejandra. Hello. And today we're going to make pan de muerto since we're in October. Mm, and starting it. Starting October, yes. And we're going to be celebrating Dia de Muertos starting our, the 30th of October all the way to the 2nd of November. So if you want to make this at home or even better, come and join us and make it here with us. We still have availability for then. Um, we have started our cooking classes again. Uh, we're super excited about it. We use face masks. We do social distancing. We're still having fun. Yes, yeah, so we're still having fun while doing that. And we clean like maniacs. So, <laughs> so we can all be safe, but we can still have fun. So, what we're gonna use for our pan de muerto? Should we start with that, Ale? Yes. Okay, so we have 500 grams of flour, and I just wanna say, make like a little pause before I go through the ingredients. I'm sorry to the cameraman. Um, so, all my ingredients are gonna be in grams, but in the recipe that I'm gonna post, it's gonna have both options, grams and cups. I like to do it in grams when I'm baking because I suck at baking. So if I'm not exact, then things don't come out exactly like um, I want them to. So that's why I'm gonna refer to grams, but you will have the recipe in cups too. Okay, so again, sorry. We have 500 grams of flour in here, and it's all-purpose flour. We are using organic all-purpose flour, but you can use any kind of all-purpose flour you want or have. We're gonna add, we also have two oranges because we need two tablespoons of orange zest. And then we also have one teaspoon, we have salt here, and we're gonna use one teaspoon of salt in there, so we're gonna be measuring in that. These are the only two things that will not have in grams. Then we're gonna use two eggs, or 100 grams of eggs, um, in here. And then seven egg yolks, or um, 126 grams of egg yolks, and I have way more than seven because Rob has now chickens, but they don't all produce big eggs. And then we also have 225 grams of butter. You're missing the sugar. Yes, you're right, I'm missing the sugar. I have 150 grams of sugar here, and then another 100 grams of sugar that we're gonna use to put on top of the, of the, um, of the bread, but this one's gonna go in the bread. I have 22 grams of uh, fast-acting yeast, or three tablespoons, or one of those little envelopes. Um, half a cup or 120 milliliters of milk. You could also use water, but I'd rather use milk, and it's warm. And then I have here some anise tea, which I made, and basically what I did is steeped, or heated up some, um, some water, and then steeped about a teaspoon of anise seeds in it. Um, but you could also use the more traditional thing, which is the, um, oh, agua de azar, orange water. That's what it is, uh, or orange flower water. But I don't have it, so then I use, I'm using the, uh, the tea, okay? So this will, and I also am gonna make it with a machine because I'm lazy and I don't like kneading by hand. But you could do it by kneading by hand if you want to have the time, which um, I don't like to do. But anyway, so into the flour, so this is the first thing we're gonna do. Into the flour, we're gonna mix in, no, sorry, my mistake. No, before the flour. We're gonna do the yeast, so we're gonna activate it, and that's why I have the warm milk in here. I'm gonna add into the milk my yeast, okay? And make sure it's not hot, just warm. So, actually, I you know hold it and I can feel the warmth, but it's not hot. And then in here, I'm gonna add a few tablespoons of sugar and just one tablespoon of flour. And I'm not measuring it because it's all gonna end up in the same place, but basically what I'm trying to do is just make sure that my yeast is activated. If it does, do you see how it's bubbling? This is super important. If it doesn't bubble, what it means is one of two things. You either killed it, which has happened more than once to us, right, Ale? Because the, uh, the, the, the milk or the water was too hot, or it was old, and then it's not acting because of that, okay? Because that also has happened to us, right? Yeah. Where we've, um, so that's why it's important that this is the first thing you do. So Ali, I'm gonna let you just, you know, try and, just moving it around a, a little bit to get rid of yeah. that, you see? Okay, while Ali does that part, I'm going to add my flour into my bowl. Okay. And I'm gonna 
use my hands because I forgot my spatula. But it's okay. It's gonna get cooked. I was gonna go get the spatula because I forgot it. And then in here I'm gonna add the um, sugar that I have left over here, which was used to be 150 grams and I had some of it there. And then I'm gonna add in here one teaspoon of um, of salt and I use sea salt but usually you shouldn't be using sea salt but it ends up mixing thank you Ale. so this is a half a teaspoon so I'm gonna make two of these okay guys just because I don't have the other the teaspoon measurement adding here the zest of one orange so what I want to do is make sure because these oranges are quite thin skinned if you see I'm just going one um, time over it and then moving it around uh, oranges are Valencia oranges they don't quite look orange but they do smell like orange and I'm just going once on it and making sure that I don't go back and forth because if I go back and forth, what's gonna happen is I'm gonna get bitter from the, um, the pith in the orange. So I want two tablespoons, and I more or less feel that one orange is one tablespoon. I don't really measure it. Um, once again, this is why I'm not a, huge, a, big, a good baker, because I usually don't follow instructions or, <laughs> or measure things, right? Oh, it depends on how much uh, orange do you want in your bread. That's well, I like a lot, so yes. I think the more flavor, the better. Yeah. And this, this recipe has so much butter and so much egg yolks that it's going to be delicious no matter what you do with it. Um, you could also do vanilla extract if you don't have any of these things. It is not a traditional thing. You could do, you could, if you wanted to do another flavor, you could do like lime zest or lemon. Mm -hmm. You could do mandarin. You could do grapefruit. You could get, you know, a little, um, how do you say, adventurous if you want to. But orange is the traditional thing to do, okay? In yes, in Mexico. Well, I don't know that we have, do we have the other muertos in other... Um, Latin cultures I'm not sure that we do but and then I'm gonna so what I'm gonna do here is just mix it and you know my kids are super excited that we're starting to make Dia de Muertos bread because that means Dia de Muertos is coming and it is a very exciting time of year for us we usually I'm gonna use my hands because this is not my my zest is not, not mixing and I want it to mix so it can all be all through that bread. So I'm just gonna use my hands for this a little bit. And um, okay, so that's done. Now we're gonna add in here, so this is super easy if you have a mixer like this. We're gonna add in here the eggs, the two whole eggs, okay? And then into that, I'm gonna add the egg yolks a little bit at a time just to make sure that everything gets mixed. Now, different areas of Mexico have different types of pan de muerto. We usually go to a town called Guayapan in the mountains of, uh, of Morelos, which is the state we're in, to see how they make their traditional bread and make some of it ourselves. It's a very um, cultural adventure that we take and most of our guests, re or not most, all our guests really enjoy it. I'm also gonna add some of this tea. I'm gonna do one tablespoon. And if I do some of the seeds, that's perfectly fine. I actually like to see that what I have in my food, so it's okay to do that too. And then you see how this is all nice. And this foamy. is the and foamy, which means that our yeast is active. So I'm gonna pour it in here too. I'm just gonna make sure I have all of it. So I'm gonna turn this off for a minute. But what I was saying, so I can pour it all in here with a, with 
the spatula and I don't lose any of it. Um, so I was saying we usually go to Wayapan and we do a little trip there which is about 40 minutes away from here and we do um, bread with uh, some traditional bakers that do their bread in, uh, in wood ovens. It's super exciting. We visit the Gabaneras which are women who make uh, scarves and shawls uh, by hand out of wool so it's a lot of fun we really enjoy ourselves and we make a lot of very exciting delicious food for them. so now that this is kind of separating a little bit from the edges we're gonna start adding the butter one cube at a time this butter is room temperature that's important and once it all has uh, come together we are gonna let this um, rest so we can leaven but I'll show you that in a minute. Okay, so this dough is ready. The, the butter has melted into it. It's a little bit goopy, but it's fine. It'll be okay. Uh, especially because on the top, or I know it's okay because on the top it was, it was trying to separate, but it is a little bit goopy just because of the addition of the butter, but that'll be okay. And if you can see, it's super yellow, which means that it has a ton of egg yolk in the, um, in the, the butter. So I'm gonna just butter it with a little bit of extra butter here, my, my um, a bowl, where we're gonna put the, uh, the dough we have there, and we're gonna let it rise for the first time. So it rises twice, once um, when you, after you make the dough, and then again, uh, after we make the, uh, the shapes, okay? So, thank you. We're gonna just put this here. I like this um, hard spatula for this because it pulls everything out and it helps me. So, it's important that after you put it in the buttered bowl, or you can use a little bit of olive oil that works too, you cover it, and that after you cover it, um, we put it not right on the sun it is not the best to put it on the sun because then the butter melts but put it somewhere warm okay um, by a stove or somewhere that you know you have a warm place in your kitchen I'm just trying to get as much of it here as possible and this should make four nice size um, panes de muerto so it should be enough for about I would say maybe six people, maybe even more, depending on how, how much they enjoy bread. And this house is barely enough for, for six of us, so uh, usually I have to make a couple of batches. So, I'm gonna use some of this um, recycled um, saran wrap that we use for something else. I'm gonna put it right here on top, and I like to put it right on top just so it doesn't get crusty, okay? And we're gonna put that aside, thank you, Ale. And meanwhile, I'm gonna pull out, I'm gonna do one of those, ta-da! So I did that same dough a little while ago, and this is how it looks after it's been risen, okay? And actually, we made this one last night and kept it in the fridge and it was perfectly fine. And then we put it out again later just to warm it up a, a little bit, but it hasn't like gone down at all, okay? So now what we need to do is punch down the uh, air, but we need a little bit of flour for the, for the table, Ale. And we also need a uh, tray to put the the ball. So this is half of what I made of the recipe you already have. So it should be all this all the way up here. But yesterday we made a we made a batch because the boys really wanted some. So we just used half. You see immediately it deflates when I pull it aside. I'm gonna just put um, some flour on my on my table just so it doesn't stick. And Ale, come help me. Let's make some some bread. You can make one and I can make another one. So you... Is I cut this in three. So one is for Ale, one is for me. And then the third one, we're gonna make 
little bits for the bones. So let's do like the little center and then the two bones, okay, Ale? Center and the little two bones. And so what you need to do is just do this. So you're gonna make a little ball like that. And you can use either, depending on the size of your ball, you can use one or two hands. So you see, I've made a ball and it doesn't stick to the, to the bottom, okay? And then I'm gonna make another little ball for my center right here. And all I'm doing is doing it with a palm of my hand. So, I like that, perfect. That's my little ball on the side. And then these are gonna be the bones. Yours gonna be too big? No, 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 it's okay. I think you're good. Ah, you mean the, the center? They can all be different shapes, why not? We're gonna make it a little smaller. Okay, this is it. Actually, maybe you wanna add it there because that, that ball is smaller than mine. Since I didn't wait it, so if you, are, if you are a perfectionist, you can always use a scale to, um, to uh, make sure that you ha all your pieces are the right size. I kinda wanted to do it, but then I decided maybe I shouldn't because I don't wanna make your life <laughs> <laughs> so you're making my life difficult. Yes, exactly. Because I don't like to do Yes. Can so I have much. the tray? Thank you. So these will grow double the size. So make sure that we put them like yours here and mine here. Okay, Ale? So they have space. This has so much butter, you don't have to butter the tray or anything like that. Okay? And then these are my, my little bones. And to stick them together... You have to use a little bit of the egg white that was left over by one of those eggs where you separated. So this is just egg white, and all I'm gonna do is just brush, oops, uh, I, I get a little too much. This is a little too much, okay. So you just have to brush some of it here. And this is gonna act not only as a shiner, but it's gonna stick this in there. And I usually make them a little bigger because this ball is gonna rise, and so it's gonna cover these, okay? So it looks like I made them too big, but in, I, in reality, when they rise, this is gonna, I don't know if I explain myself, it's gonna dome bigger, but uh, you'll see, you'll see, you'll see, you'll see, okay? So I'm gonna also do a little bit of glue here. The rest already has a bunch of glue, so we're good, okay? And then I'm gonna make sure I put a little bit of this to make it shine too and then glue my bottom of my ball right there. Okay, there you go. There you go, Ale. Oh, it is working. Here, put it there. Okay, I'm gonna put some of this on top, and then this one. Okay, so let's cover it with more of these wrap, just so it doesn't get crusty, and then we're gonna put them somewhere where they will rise for about about an hour, if it, but sometimes it goes faster depending on your weather. So for us it could be 30 minutes, okay? So we'll see you in 30 minutes then. Hello, <laughs> we're back. So the bread has been resting for 30 minutes, yes. a little bit. On top of the stove because it's kind of warm, warm on top of the stove, yeah. even though the air is kind of cold right now here. And it's risen, so it's more or less double the size, right? Yes. So we're gonna stick it in a 180 centigrade oven or 350 Fahrenheit for about 15, 20 minutes, okay? Or until it's all golden. Ah, you know what? Wait, Ale. Wait, 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 wait. I made a mistake. Wait, I'm gonna take this one out because otherwise it's not gonna allow it to rise, okay? Okay. So that's gonna hit it. Okay, so we have the oven on and the We're going to wait in. for 15 minutes. 15 minutes and then when it starts smelling, we'll check it with a toothpick, make sure that the toothpick yes. comes out clean and then we're going to have ready some melted butter and some sugar to sprinkle it with. <laughs> the, uh, the bread, I can smell it, so it should be done. So I'm going to open gonna the peak. oven. Oh, this is beautiful. Ta-da! And as always, mine sucks. <laughs> Yours is super nice. <laughs>
<laughs> so I'm gonna just make sure, and I should have done that in the oven, but I'm pretty sure it's done. Just to yeah. it's clean. Oops, it's done. Oops, sorry. Yes. And now what I'm gonna do, you can let it sit for a few minutes, just so it's not as tender because it's a very tender um, dough. But you don't want it to cool off completely before you add the sugar. But you can let it sit for a few minutes. I'm just gonna loosen it up a little bit very gently just because we're on camera and I'd rather do this earlier than later. Okay. Uh, there you go, perfect. And then this one, and Ale's gonna start brushing it with uh, some uh, butter. butter. Some uh, bakeries will make a simple syrup with either anise seeds or with um, orange water blossom, blossom, orange blossom water. And instead of using butter, they'll use the, uh, the, the syrup, which will actually stick better than butter. Sorry. But for home purposes, butter is perfectly fine. Why don't you do the other one, Ale, while okay. I do this? Because that way it'll stick better. It has to be wet. You can't brush them all and then try and put the, the, sugar. the sugar on because it will fall off. So you have to do one at a time, make sure that it's nice and, but like I said, if you want to, you can just make a basic simple syrup. You can put a little flavor into it, like anise seeds. I'm gonna switch you around, Ale, yep. and I'll sprinkle. Or you can use the butter. The butter also works. And it will stick your sugar on the top. On the top. So, and we sometimes just leave it on so it can stick a little longer, or it can stick better. And, okay, you do that one, Ale. So you can also like color your sugar. Ah, yeah, some pink. Places, yeah, because some places here in Mexico they do that. So you can get creative, creative yeah. with with that. Yeah, they usually they, they will do it pink too. Yeah. Yes, I forgot about that. So it's something we we already learned in Huayapan about the color. What was that about? Why did they do that color? Was that like blood or something? Uh, no. Uh, it's it's a. Uh, yeah, it's something that represents like the Ah, uh, okay. I can remember. It's been a year. Okay, so cheers, cheers guys. This is our pan de muerto and hopefully you'll do your offering this year for the people who have passed in your life.